Today is August 11, 2025, and you're listening to Space News First Up. Discover your next mission in the space industry with the Space News Job Exchange. Visit jobs.spacenews.com to find top aerospace roles and connect with leading employers. And for employers, use discount code J-O-B-E-X for 15% off your next purchase. Here are today's top headlines in space. A SpaceX crew Dragon spacecraft splashed down Saturday, concluding a five-month mission to the International Space Station. Rocket Lab says a first launch of Neutron is still possible this year, as long as it can stick to a green light schedule. Intuitive Machines now plans to build its lunar communications in-house. Redwire is making a bigger push into space pharmaceutical development with a new business entity devoted to the field. ANZA move to accelerate development of space, Nuclear Reactors has industry support. First Up is produced by Space News, the industry standard for professional space journalism. Visit spacenews.com for breaking news, policy updates, and original analysis. We begin today with news that a SpaceX Crew Dragon spacecraft splashed down Saturday, concluding a five-month mission to the International Space Station. The Crew Dragon spacecraft Endurance splashed down off the coast of San Diego, California, at 11.33 a.m. Eastern more than 17 hours after undocking from the station. The splashdown completed the Crew-10 mission, returning NASA astronauts Anne McLean and Nickel Ayers, Japanese space agency JAXA astronaut Takuya Onishi, and Roscosmos cosmonaut Kirill Peskov after nearly five months in space. They were replaced by Crew-11, which launched at the beginning of August. NASA officials said after the Crew-10 splashdown, they are still studying whether to extend the Crew-11 mission from six months to eight, which depends on certifying Crew Dragon for a longer on-orbit life, but are planning as though the mission will be extended. Rocket Lab says a first launch of Neutron is still possible this year as long as it can stick to a green light schedule. In an earnings call last week, Rocket Lab CEO Peter Beck said his company was working hard to launch the medium-class reusable rocket by the end of the year, but every single thing needs to go to plan for the schedule to hold. He suggested that is unlikely, stating that the company would not rush and take stupid risks to stay on that schedule. Rocket Lab continues to make good progress on Neutron, he said, and plans to formally open the rocket's launch site, Launch Complex 3, at Wallops Island, Virginia, on August 28th. He also said the company is sizing up opportunities to participate in the Golden Dome Missile Defense Program, including using sensor technologies from GEOST, a company it is acquiring. Intuitive Machines now plans to build its lunar communications in-house. The company said in an earnings call last week that it is investing in capabilities to produce on its own the five satellites it needs for a lunar communications network to support NASA and other customers. The company previously contracted with York Space Systems for those satellites. Building the satellites internally provides more control over cost and schedule, Intuitive Machines executives argued, and could create additional business. The first of those satellites will launch as a rideshare on the IM-3 Lunar Lander mission, which will be pushed back to the second half of 2026. The company took a 19.8 million estimate at completion adjustment in the second quarter to reflect the impact of bringing satellite production in-house. Redwire is making a bigger push into space pharmaceutical development with a new business entity devoted to the field. The company said last week it was standing up SpaceMD, an entity that will commercialize its pharmaceutical in-space laboratory, or pillbox, technology used on the ISS. Redwire said it has a licensing agreement in place with one pharmaceutical company to develop drugs to treat bone disease and Redwire would receive royalties from commercial sales of any drugs developed through that agreement. Redwire argues that improvements in space access and in-space technologies, as well as growing awareness of the benefits of microgravity research, make space pharmaceutical work more commercially feasible. A move to accelerate development of space nuclear reactors has industry support. A recent NASA directive calls for a new procurement to develop a 100-kilowatt reactor that would be ready to fly by 2030 and could be used on the moon for future Artemis missions. The plan enacts many of the recommendations of a recent report that called for accelerating work on space nuclear power and propulsion. 
Industry officials said they believe the plan is technically feasible, building on past work on smaller reactors. Some challenges the plan faces, though, include availability of a workforce to develop such reactors, untested regulatory frameworks, and funding. Share your company's news with the entire space industry through Stellar Dispatch, the press release service from Space News. Learn more and use discount code SD2106 for 15% off when you submit yours at spacenews.com slash Stellar Dispatch. In other news, a Chinese rocket placed 11 satellites into orbit for a commercial Internet of Things, IoT constellation. A G-Long-3 solid propellant rocket lifted off at 12.31 p.m. Eastern Friday from a barge off the coast of the Chinese city of Rizhou. The launch sent 11 satellites into orbit for the Geely-04 constellation operated by Geespace, a private satellite maker and subsidiary of Geely Holding Group, an automotive conglomerate. The satellites are part of a planned 72-satellite first phase to provide near-global IoT connectivity services, with Geespace focusing on business opportunities in the Middle East, Southeast Asia, Africa, and Latin America. Chinese startup iSpace has launched the nation's first rocket recovery ship. The ship, named Jingji Guihong, Interstellar Return, will allow for the offshore recovery of medium and large-scale reusable rockets. The Interstellar Return was designed specifically for recovering the first stages of iSpace's Hyperbola, 3-methane liquid oxygen rocket, but could also be used for other medium and large-scale reusable rockets. The first Hyperbola 3 launch is projected to take place by the end of the year. Republic World reports that Indian launch startup Skyroot Aerospace successfully tested the largest privately developed solid rocket motor in the country. The static fire test of the Column 1-200 motor took place at ISRO's Sadish Dawan Space Center as the motor ran for 110 seconds. The motor serves as the first stage of Skyroot's Vikram-1 small launch vehicle, with a first launch planned by the end of the year. Collect Space reports that the effort by Texas members of Congress to move a shuttle to Houston has taken another turn with a complaint to the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court. In a letter to Chief Justice John Roberts, who also serves as Chancellor of the Smithsonian Institution, Senator John Cornyn, Republican, Texas, and Representative Randy Weber, Republican, Texas complained that the Smithsonian staff has taken affirmative steps to oppose the passage and implementation of a provision in the Budget Reconciliation Bill that directs NASA to transfer a space vehicle to a NASA center involved in the commercial crew program. The intent of the provision, its proponents state, is to move discovery from the National Air and Space Museum to Space Center Houston. The letter claims that the Smithsonian was violating federal law by stating that the institution, not NASA, held the title to discovery and asked Roberts to investigate what they argue was lobbying by the Smithsonian when it made such statements. The Smithsonian stated it was confident it was in compliance with anti-lobbying laws. The New York Times reports that Jim Lovell, the NASA astronaut who commanded Apollo 13, has died. Lovell died Thursday at the age of 97, his family and NASA announced Friday. Lovell, a Navy test pilot, was selected as a NASA astronaut in 1962 and flew on Gemini 7 and Gemini 12 before serving as command module pilot for Apollo 8 in 1968, the first crewed mission to orbit the moon. He was set to walk on the moon as commander of Apollo 13 in 1970, but an explosion in the service module of the spacecraft on its way there instead turned the mission into a fight to keep the three astronauts on board alive. Lovell gained new fame a quarter century later with the release of the movie Apollo 13, a dramatization of the mission starring Tom Hanks as Lovell. <laughs>